dive right in. Joining me for the first time on the coalition is someone that I've wanted to meet for quite a while. In Rhode Island, when you do indie media, you reach out to your network of friends and contacts and you say, okay, there's an issue coming up, there's something you want to discuss, who do I talk to? And it's not always obvious who you should speak with until you let your network and your spidey sense kind of do your work for you. Three people that I know from three completely different walks of life suggested I speak to this gentleman, Randy Noka. He's joining us live in studio. We're going to talk tonight about the state of the Narragansett Indian tribe and the Narragansett Indian nation and a host of issues that have risen up, not just in the last few weeks, but over the last you know, sort of a lifetime if you're a typical Rhode Islander. Randy, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Pat. Now, I want to point something out that's intriguing to me. I'm not a native of Rhode Island. I've been here about 25 or 30 years. I've raised two children here in Rhode Island. And what's intriguing to me is that every schoolboy, every schoolgirl learns the story of the Narragansetts, their contributions, their, their, their seminal role in the founding of Rhode Island, um, the work they did with Rhode Islanders, the work they did in support of Americans in, in the founding of this American experiment. Uh, we learn all about that. And then somewhere around the middle of the 19th century, it stops. The, the education stops. We, we, we're not presented with any more information as part of the curriculum. And it led me to wonder, first of all, why is that? Because the tribe is alive and well in here in Rhode Island and quite active. And number two, I, I've got to believe that contributes to some of the controversies that surround our daily interaction with Native Americans here in, in Rhode Island and actually across the country, that sort of disconnect that takes place. So I guess if I can just sort of lead off, um, you know, if there was a, if I were to ask you what the state is of the Narragansett Indian Reservation, the Narragansett Indian Nation here in Rhode Island, what, what is their current state and how are things going? Well, and again, thank you for having me. Um, if we could back up a second, the state of the tribe and, and, and the nation, if, um, you let in with the education that um, may have been taught at one time in the school system, and it ended you know, at whatever point, 19th century. I know when I went to school here, I've lived here all my life. Born in Wesley, Rhode Island, uh, I grew up down in Richmond, right next to the reservation, town over from the reservation, or what is now the reservation. But what I recall about, that's going way back, but uh, my high school years, or elementary school years, and whatever, the history perhaps more so, um, it left a lot, and still does, to my understanding, to this day, leaves a lot to be desired about what really fell the, the Native, Amer Native people, not necessarily Native American, obviously America came to be what it is mm -hmm. uh, long after uh, ancestors were here. My ancestors, the uh, uh, Aboriginal people, mm -hmm. the Narragansett, the uh, Apache, the uh, Wampanoag, the, this, you know, all the nations that were um, part of this country or this what became America, <clears throat> Turtle Island as it's known, um, there were so many tribes. Um, present, day, present day, I'm maybe jumping a little bit here, but uh, today we have 566, 67 federally acknowledged tribes. Mm -hmm. It's a designation that um, the federal government, a relationship with the federal government um, establishes the, uh, a tribe um, so they can have this uh, perhaps financial relationship with and um, other things that um, the atrocities, they're trying to make up to some extent the atrocities that were perpetrated against the Aboriginal right. people. Mm -hmm. um, and so that, that's one designation, federal acknowledgement, federal recognition, if you will, 560 some tribes. There's also state recognized tribes, um, you know, various states that recognize mm -hmm. um, groups within uh, their boundaries. And then ultimately, more importantly, perhaps, st uh, tribes recognizing tribes. Um, how this country came to be, what is, what is lacking in the school system, and it's a sore point with me. It's, I don't know why, and it's a good question, why isn't there more about it? I can only assume and, and, and be comfortable with what I'm thinking. This government, this country more so, um, I don't want to say embarrassed, or, uh, because regret by definition implies a conscience. Mm -hmm. I don't think a lot of people hear how it's evolved several hundred years after um, 500 some how many years now after Columbus uh, uh, apparently discovered this mm -hmm. this country um, and manifest uh, destiny and uh, doctrine of discovery and these rights that people um, allowed themselves to have because 
they were different from where those that um, the countries that they invaded. Mm -hmm. um, but why doesn't this country teach more? You know, they can they can make uh, um, and rightfully so. Um, the, the Jewish, the Holocaust, um, the other, uh, even today, the uh, the rights, the human violation, rights violations that other countries um, take against their own people, North Korea and other countries that um, some terrible things are being done against their people. Um, and this country can point those out, but yet it will never point out what was done to the people here. Mm -hmm. Ever will they, they uh, never will they be, be able to pay back the price of what was done to the people here, what was done to my ancestors. Uh, but it, it's a question that maybe someday, I, several years back, I, my wife and I we were working with the South Kingston school system, trying to get a, a curriculum change um, that provided a better uh, opportunity, a better education for the students mm -hmm. as to what really happened in this country. It's not like we're gone. Isn't it? The Narragansett, thank you for pointing out, the Narragansett is still here. We mm -hmm. got a little postage stamp size reservation down in the Charlestown area, right. 1,900 acres or thereabouts. But this used to be all Narragansett territory. Mm -hmm. We didn't know boundaries, you know, like the states have bound themselves now and towns and all that. This was Narragansett territory. Um, and now we have this little uh, stamp size reservation down there. But we're still here, regardless of what people know or don't know. And, and hopefully shows like yours and, and, and maybe here, whatever tidbits in the history books um, or what people can glean on, on computers nowadays, the, the history of this country, what it did to the original pe the ab uh, Aboriginal peoples, um, it's, it should be known. It's, it should, you can't point out other atrocities without owning up to what right. you did also. No, no, that's, that's an outstanding point. And by the way, the, you know, it, it, it's occurring to me now because um, so much of my work is in the moment that, in fact, this is Columbus Day weekend, and the and your visit actually was unintentional in, in sort of coinciding with Columbus Day weekend. Um, it's just a, an interesting coincidence because you know because the tribe there's been so many issues over the years where it would appear as to myself as a, as a very interested but very much an outsider, it would appear that the, that state government in, in this part of, of of New England, Rhode Island in particular seems to be almost unanimously working in, in opposition to any type of interest that the tribe may have. And, 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 and I want to go back in time and, and just sort of and, and go, through, go through some of those issues. But right now, I mean, how many, how many folks are, if you will, and, and as a libertarian, it, it appalls me to use this term, but how many people are, are, are recognized right now as being part of the Narragansett tribe here in Rhode Island? Oh, we have roughly 26, 2,700 members. Mm -hmm. uh, but real quick, Pat, Columbus Day weekend, it, it, it maybe shows a little bit of hope that, um, and no disrespect to any ethnicity or you know, mm -hmm. Columbus Day or whatever people, however people view things, including holidays and, and um, who discovered this country. What, but a lot of states, certainly some towns and, and companies, uh, are realizing that um, Columbus isn't who he was said to be. He's not the discoverer of this country. Mm -hmm. And 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 they're taking them taking um, action to to downplay or even um, disrecognize, if you will. And again, it's not a, a slight against him personally or his ethnicity right. or whatever. But uh, the truth about him discovering this this country, you know, it's being understood better. It's being explained better. And not, no, he didn't set. He never set foot on this country. Mm -hmm. And but yet so. And because of that, in, in a small way, progress is being made for the sake of they're taking away that recognition to that holiday. We don't celebrate Columbus Day. Right. We don't celebrate Thanksgiving um, like most people do, and that's no disrespect to anyone how they... But, but, but this, this is important because there are a lot of folks out there who will trivialize um, the controversy surrounding Columbus Day. And uh, you, as an as a, a integral member of the Narragansett community here in Rhode Island, as someone who spent a lifetime advocating for both a recognition of the, the, the realistic history of the Narragansetts, not just the sugar-coated, Pollyannish view that so many children are fed, and as someone who's invested a lifetime um, in promoting and trying to build the community in, in a very positive manner, uh, this is a uh, this is a deeply personal issue to you. I, this is not something to be trivialized. So I, 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 I want to know your, how folks 
who are, who, are, who are Aboriginal, Native American, whichever term you choose to use, how do they feel about the, this, this, this Columbus Day controversy? I mean, uh, is there a unanimity there that the country needs to move beyond this obsession with Christopher Columbus and recognize that there, in fact, are, are layers of issues here? Well, it, it, it would be nice, I guess. Uh, um, I would never expect naive to think that this country is ever going to um, do the right thing totally. Um, mm -hmm. You know, Columbus Day, Thanksgiving Day, and how, how even some of my, my own people and other native people, if you will, how they go about recognizing or not recognizing that it's truly a personal thing. It's a federal holiday, and yeah, who doesn't enjoy a day off? I'm mm -hmm. not knocking that, certainly, but but to give recognition to someone that um, and what he did to the people back then, mm -hmm. never mind that he never stepped foot here. What he did, he just took people back, you know, slavery and, and mm -hmm. all, and, and stole people from their homelands and, and things as such. There's nothing uh, honorable about that man as far as I'm concerned. They give honor because they, they, they had to put it on someone, hey, you discovered America. No, he didn't. But what he also did, the atrocities that he perpetrated right. um, back at that time. Um, but that's my way of thinking, and don't fault me for it. You know, you don't have to agree, or the viewers don't have to agree, but um, open your eyes to the realities. It, if, if, what you, if you're hearing anything from me, uh, and it maybe sparks some kind of interest or um, a desire to look into things further, then beautiful. Um, you may not, again, find it, the, the history in the history books being taught, but you know, uh, look at the computers and different things. But um, I, I didn't want to jump too far back on that, but you, know, you asked about um, my, the reservation and the people and all, and again, we have roughly 26, 2,700 members of what at one time was tens of thousands. Um, real quick, in the 1600s, 1673, I think the year was, uh, the Great Swamp Massacre, um, when the colonists and militia um, one of our winter encampments, um, they came in and mutilated and killed and, and um, our women and children that were in and elders that were in that camp. Um, you know, that's, that's part of the history of, of right. this, this state and or what became Rhode Island and, and my, my ancestors. Mm -hmm. um, there's nothing, nothing uh, glamorous or, or um, something, that, there's nothing to be proud of of how this country evolved, how this state evolved. Um, what they did to the uh, people, and I, I don't want to keep repeating things as such, but... No, no, this, 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 this is important because this really sets the backdrop. You know, I've had people reach out to me since, um, since I, I mentioned that you were going to be on the show. And, you know, it, it's things like reparations with regard to, for, for example, uh, what happened with slavery, um, reparations or recognition of what was done to the Aboriginal people in the founding of this nation are challenging because on one level folks will say, well, I'm not responsible for that, I'm, I'm not guilty of that, I wasn't alive then. But at the same time, the cultural benefits, um, dare I use the word privilege, but the, 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 the cultural benefits, the, the economic benefits that have accrued to generations of Americans as a result of their ability to essentially wipe out a, a, a large part of the Native population and take advantage of all that the American continent had to offer is, is, is undeniable. You, you know, we, it's uncomfortable. It's, it's not something that's easily discussed. But at the same time, in this nation, it's critical, given how government seems to work now, that we get back to certain basic truths. Historical facts happened. Right. Stuff happened. And a lot of it was ugly. And to, you're, you, you bring up a great point to the, to the, to the, to the effect that we continually reflect on the validity of other governments and in some cases work to unseat those governments based on human rights violations or atrocities, most of which were real sometimes by our system imagined, but to the degree that we feel a validity to do that um, and yet at the same time ignore our own history, that's difficult. Mm -hmm. and it, it just, it's not intellectually honest. Right. This country, you know, certainly in my opinion, and opinions of many people worldwide. This is the greatest country in the world uh, as far as um, the rights that people have to whatever extent. Um, mm -hmm. Not necessarily totally equal across the board and broad brush, everyone has the same rights. We know that not to be the case and maybe we'll get there someday. But um, yeah, don't take away don't take away the reality of how we got to be where we are today. Mm -hmm. you know, eight, years, um, eight years ago now, nine years ago, we elected for the first time a man of uh, minority persuasion, 
I don't want to focus on necessarily the African American part of it because it was a man of minority persuasion, mm -hmm. and and yeah, he happened to be African American, Barack Obama, and um, who could have foreseen that back in the '60s and whatever and right. beyond that? No one could have foreseen that. You and I are old enough to remember that that would be you know when there was a time when Archie Bunker was not seen as a parody by a significant part of the country. Absolutely, and and to think that you know. 40 years, 50 years um, removed from that point in history, um, the, co the country has grown that much in, in open-mindedness and, and, and taking the blinders off to an extent. But yet, and I mean no disrespect to whatever political affirmation people have that may be watching, but mm -hmm. um, now, after that, after eight years of, of President Obama, we've elected a man that is on record as supporting uh, um, or giving uh, not disrecognizing or not seeing a problem with white supremacists and, and this, mm. this, if I get myself in harm's way with some of the viewers then, then so be it. I'm here to speak today. And speak well, you're here mind. to speak for yourself. I mean, yeah. you're, you're here to speak your truth and right. that's, that's why we have this show. And I, I appreciate it. But, you know, it's like, yeah, we, we made great strides if only for the fact of how he was elected, President Obama, but yet, you know, eight years later, uh, you know, and, and are we moving backwards, you know? It, uh, you'll, you'll get no disagreement with me on certain levels. When I look at how this country is, 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 is this backlash against people who are political refugees um, from other nations, that, that to your point, uh, you know, it's, uh, that's what's kind of startling about this conversation. To your point, we, 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 we quote unquote celebrate freedom, but at the same time, for those who are political refugees, both native to the country and newly arrived to the country, to openly engage in this sort of crusade against them. Point, trying to accrue to them all the all the problems our society has right now is ludicrous. Right. Particularly when, given, you know, you and I grew up, I'm probably a little older than you, but you and I grew up at a time when there were established truths that were complete fiction. We've moved beyond that. For a variety of reasons, we should be smarter than that now. That should, that we should be. Yep. That, that's the emphasis, it should be. Because all of this continues to have and again, an outsider's perspective, a real-world effect on the, the quality of life, the living conditions, the opportunities that are afforded to Aboriginal people. I mean, there, there, there seems to be across this country still, despite years post the Regulatory Gaming Act on the federal level, and despite years of, uh, and, and I guess for lack of a better term, you, you know, patronizing behavior by a variety of political leaders, you st still have, from an outsider's perspective, a, a significant economic divide that takes place in many parts of the country between our native population and the current po you know, folks who came to this country later. And, 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 and I appreciate that point, Pat. It, um, backing up real quick on, on something, the, um, oh, perhaps I'll just focus on what you just were. Um, you know, tribes, tribes today, yes, there's been great strides with how the federal government works with tribes, you know, mm -hmm. with grants and opportunities and, and uh, protections, if you will, rights, um, Indian, uh, Indian Civil Rights Act. There's, there's different things that um, some may view, some of the viewers perhaps may view as, well, yeah, they, they're getting a lot of things and all. I don't care. This country will never make up for the, the debt that they owe to my people, what they put on my people. Never will they make it up. And, and the rights that we may have as a nation, the Narragansett and other nations, um, you know, our reservation and what uh, uh, rights we have over that and the people that may come there, um, it, it's not the same as Rhode Island. It's never going to be the same as, it's on the same level as a, a state government and the rights. Um, you know, we still have the uh, great father, the, the federal government, looking over us one way or another and maybe changing things. Trump, again, I would name him as it is. You know, there's concerns out there in Indian country that he may um, try and unmind to take away, to, to whatever extent, some of the strides and, and gains we've made as, as nations by some of the past presidents. And, and a large part of it started with Richard Nixon, you know, of all people. It's like, um, you know, the, um, back then the uh, Self-Determination Act, that's what it was called. And it was uh, when Richard Nixon was in it. Some of the things that... Now, a, a history lesson, even myself, it's like sometimes my eyes are often, my eyes open to some of the things that um, were done throughout the history of our people, a termination act, a uh, detribalization act. Yeah, tell, are, tell, go to, feel free to go into some detail on that because folks, you know, that's, that's kind of understanding we're trying to get. 
I mean, that's so much of that is glossed over in terms of history that what happened in the run up to the current day isn't really understood in, in this whole sort of federalization uh, of, of the treatment of Indian nations. So to, to feel free to go into some detail on that. Okay, and then believe me, it's, it's whatever I may know, I'm far from an expert on it, you no, know, historical insights and all, but, mm -hmm. but, but nonetheless, how has this country evolved, if you will, you know, this, the original 13 colonies and, and, and westward movement and all, you know, each movement, each step that others from other nations, other countries, you know, you want to talk about immigrants and, and um, you know, how things today may be changing under the current president's administration. The only, the only people that are native to this country are my, are my, are my ancestors and those from them. Everyone else was, is an immigrant one way or another. No right. disrespect to anyone. They're all immigrants. So what gives this man, this current administration, the right to say, well, wait a minute. Let's put a border up along Mexico. Why not Canada then? What's so different about the Mexican people that Mr. this man wants to treat them uh, the way by not see the... Uh, there's not a difference to how uh, Canada is being viewed. I'm not disrespecting either country or, uh, um, mm -hmm. or any race, creed, or color when I say that, but I, I digress when it comes to uh, get off the point. Um, how this country evolved, and I mentioned the Termination Act and the uh, detribalization, maybe good focus for the sake of my tribe and, and the local. Uh, in 1880, the state of Rhode Island had been founded then, I, I don't know how long, 100 years, whatever. Um, and there, there were um, um, dealings with the Narragansett, however many of them were back then, you know, and the lands that we lost as people, more people came, you know, Providence grew there, and Warwick and all these other towns that evolved. Um, my tribe ended up with a small um, parcel down in the Charlestown area. But in 1880, it's called the Detribalization Act. The state of Rhode Island, the government at the time, um, and my ancestors that were here at the time said, um, we're going to, that's what they call it, we're going to detribalize you. You're not going to be a tribe anymore. You're not going to practice your customs. You're not going to speak your language. You're not going to do anything that is uh, unique to you as a Narragansett. You're going to take on the customs and the rules and moves, live under the rules and regulations of Rhode Island. That's what this state did to my people back then. 18th Detribalization Act. You are no longer a tribe. And that's, you know, that happened uh, quite often out there in the rest of this country. The Trail of Tears, some of your viewers may have heard about. Mm -hmm. The forced removal of people from the North Carolina area, Cherokee Nation, the forced removal in Chittimacha and other tribes from um, North Carolina and other points to out in the Midwest, Oklahoma right. and all. Can you imagine with anyone that's watching this show and, and listening, whatever, that, would you allow or put up with anyone forcibly removing you from your territory, from your home, your home on, on Canal Street or wherever it is? No, we're taking you out of here. We're moving you to Oklahoma. That's what happened to my people, our people back then. And no one would stand for that now. So why can't they understand when we're st we still have some concerns and we still stand on what we are as Native people, and we'll never forget that. And we expect you to, if not understand it, then at least honor it. You mm -hmm. know, it, it doesn't make us different. It makes you different from us. This is our country. So... Um, hopefully, uh, maybe that uh, will, will hit a nerve with me. No one, you wouldn't allow anyone to force you out of your home. Right. Why do you think, why, why should we? And we're going to always hold that, not anger, but that reality. Because that, you know, if not for me and others, whatever, uh, speaking and having these opportunities, then no one's going to know the truth because the history books don't teach it. Right. Now, that Detribalization Act, ended up having long-term implications for the tribe currently, didn't it? I mean, you, 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 the, the tribe has faced a series of obstacles as a... There's a tendency in American history to trivialize the presence of certain tribes that to imply, I don't believe this, but I just want to reflect on this, to imply that certain tribal nations are almost conjured up or almost invented for the purposes of taking advantage of federal laws. It's an, an abhorrent way to think. Um, it's not based on fact. And yet, it's, again, it's another attempt to trivialize the concerns and the history of our indigenous people here. The Narragansett Indian tribe has had to essentially fight for recognition despite playing a seminal role in the founding of one of the original American colonies 
to a certain degree, you're still fighting for pure recognition that tribes around the nation get, aren't you? In the sense that, you know, and we're going to get into this a little bit, special laws were enacted to prevent you from taking advantage of the Indian Gaming Act. Special laws were enacted or court, cost, court cases were fought for an, against an attempt by you to take land that you folks had legitimately purchased to be incorporated. In, land that essentially you at one time owned, that you were, you essentially had to go back out and buy <laughs> to reincorporate that. The, the entire weight and effort of the Rhode Island government and to a certain degree the federal Supreme Court seemed to conspire against you from doing that. Um, <laughs> You know, I'm sorry, I, I, I'm, I'm not finding humor in this. I, you know, as my, my, my reading over this in the last few days, I, again, I, the polite word, because we're not FCC approved here, but I have to keep it clean, I'm aghast. Um, I don't know if that even really conveys the full emotion here. Um, but that essentially, in the eyes of the state of Rhode Island, in the 19th century, you guys were delegitimized, and it's, it's a onus that you've had to fight and still continue to fight, don't you? Absolutely, and, and I appreciate that. Again, the, eight, the uh, Tribalization Act, it, it did what it did. It, it never it never stopped us from recognizing who we are to right. ourselves, certainly. Mm -hmm. Maybe the state thought they got away with something. And uh, more to your point, absolutely. Every day, every generation that's gone since, every day, you're fighting you know, whatever powers uh, that be, external to the tribe, um, town, state, whatever, federal government, um, you're always uh, on guard to defend what you know to be the case about yourself and, and the prices that your ancestors paid, <clears throat> excuse me, to have, you, to have me be here, you know, have this opportunity to speak about it. Oh, this is great. There was a great uh, um, price to pay by the ancestors in order for us to still be recognized and hold ourselves up and, and proud of it. I'm a near Gansett. You know, and, and be proud of that because of what we learned growing up individually in our homes and all, our parents and grandparents and all. But yes, uh, uh, you alluded to some of the things that Rhode Island did. Um, my tribe, the only tribe in this country to have its, uh, under the Indian Game and Regulatory Act, federal law that allows tribes to build a, a game on their reservations um, under laws that the state allow. The tribes can't just do it. Um, the state laws still have some kind of effect or, or oversight mm -hmm. over it. Um, Utah and Hawaii and you know, all the native populations can't build game there because those states don't have gaming right. uh, as examples. But my tribe, the only tribe that had it uh, right stripped of it under the Indian Gaming Regulatory Act by the late Senator Chafee back in 96. And you were specifically singled out. They, Absolutely. They, this was not, this was, they didn't even... <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's horrifying. I'm not a big government guy. I'm the chairman of the Libertarian Party. I believe in small government, but I also have, I believe, a fundamental decency here. This wasn't some even some obscure attempt to say that tribe is founded whose leaders interface with, you know, individuals who are seminal in religious history. No, they actually just actually wrote it and said, uh, sorry, none for you. Yeah, uh, according, if I remember the verbiage correctly, um, as far as the Indian uh, Game and Regulatory Act goes, never against Indian lands will not apply under that act. Something to that effect. Right, right. Uh, yeah, we were singled out by Senator Chafee at the time. Mm -hmm. Federal law, uh, they passed it. They right. had it attached to the Army Bus Appropriation Act, and, and it became federal law. Um, mm -hmm. The smoke shop, I realize, got other points. And, um, no, 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 but no, this, this is all important. I mean, I, I, we were talking about before, some of the folks who work here, we still remember the smoke shop, right? If you're of a certain right. age, you remember the sheer lunacy of that because all you folks were trying to do was take advantage or, or, or utilize the same rules and regulations that others, and please correct me if I'm wrong, uh, uh, that other tri independent Indian nations around the country were taking advantage of to promote economic activity on, on your behalf. You were right. entrepreneurs essentially. The, the, um, the smoke shop, uh, the tribe opened the smoke shop of business selling tax fees, um, cigarettes down there. It, it did make uh, uh, big news. Um, went on the third day of being open after trying to work out things with uh, then Governor Kacheri. Um, he always threw the casino into a, any discussion. But we've had various efforts to try to build a casino. And we're not just a casino tribe, we're trying to get a casino. We're trying to carry, um, do things, economic development for our people. Right. You know, so we can um, provide better for our people. Um, but nonetheless, we've had these efforts. And one way or another, they've been thwarted by the, the state government or federal government even. Um, the smoke shop. We, we had been open for a couple of days. The governor 
ordered the state troopers to come down. 51 troopers came down that day on the third day and, and arrested uh, the chief, uh, the three council people, including myself, my wife, um, taken down by some of the biggest troopers uh, on the force at the time, all because of an alleged illegal sales of uh, cigarettes. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't have the state tax stamp on our cigarettes. Right. We're a sovereign nation. We had a right, and as far as we're concerned, to sell cigarettes. It's not like it was cigarettes. Every store around sells cigarettes, but yet we were focused on for selling them uh, under the no tax stamp of Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. Well, um, Rhode Island's tax stamps don't apply to Massachusetts. They shouldn't apply to the reservation. Right. Um, so yes, it was an opportunity for the tribe. Uh, it was very popular. Uh, sales were great, but you know. And years later, after we went to trial, well, there were those that got arrested, we went to trial right over there across the river mm -hmm. in, in state court. And um, you know, it, it's it's just part of the history. Right. And I know an hour doesn't do justice for what can be discussed, but it's just examples of what is still wrong. You know, if, if people don't want to agree with everything we're trying, then fine. Or if people don't think we should have rights, that's their, their opinion. But I know that we would uh, expect to have the same opportunities that other tribes have um, right. just because we're in Rhode Island and it, it's it's shown itself to be a, a different animal this state. Right, and, and we're, I have to take a quick break to thank one of our sponsors right now, but, but we'll reflect on in, in, in the next uh, a few minutes. Um, and by the way, if you're just joining us, I've got Randy Noka from the Narragansett Indian Nation here in studio at the Coalition. We're talking about, I'll call it the state the state of, of the tribe right now and, and where they are in a variety of issues. But here you've got a state that is literally tripping over itself, actually writing a check for millions of dollars a year as part of the state budget to subsidize the media operations of the Twin River Corporation, um, seemingly going into a mini collective nervous breakdown this week when the realization that lottery revenues were slipping, um, where Casino gaming and lottery revenues are a significant, I believe it's the second or third, please correct me if I'm wrong, second or third largest source of revenue for the state, yet have worked aggressively to make sure that despite the rest of the nation as a policy permitting Indian nations to engage in that, subject to state law, um, they'll, they'll They've excluded you. I, it's, it, I'm not, for the record, I'm not a fan of casino gaming. I, I, I don't see it as a great economic development tool. And, but as a libertarian, if I truly believe that, if, if, that everyone should be able to have the access to engage in casino gaming. I don't believe in government op monopolies being granted. In this case, we've got a single corporation now who's the exclusive beneficiary of the casino gaming in this state, while simultaneously seemingly hell-bent to prevent your tribe from recognizing the same benefits that tribes, tribal nations across the country are allowed to. I, we're going to get into that for a minute. It's just, um, it's, well. folks, if you're just joining us, Randy Noka is in studio with us. He's, uh, we're discussing all issues regarding Narragansett Indian tribe. We're, we've spoken about the history. Um, the rather sordid history of how this state uh, seemingly uh, has single-handedly conspired to, at every turn, uh, discriminate against uh, the Narragansett Indian tribe, uh, going through the early bloody history to now the political battles that take place in the courthouse and at the state house. Um, I have to mention, of course, one of our sponsors, the New England Cannabis Convention, any can slash ri. Folks, October 28th and 29th, here in Rhode Island, a, a, a festival, if you will, a convention, a study session, and a counter session for folks who are involved in the medical cannabis program here in Rhode Island and nearby Massachusetts, um, I invite you to attend. It's, it's a day well spent. Uh, you'll be able to speak to caregivers, you'll be able to speak to uh, folks who are advocates, uh, people with uh, legal expertise, you'll see vendors helping folks who are involved in growing, uh, vendors who are involved in, in, in the processing and the medical, if you will, the edible uh, portion of the medical cannabis program. If you've got someone in your life who is, um, 
who finds himself in the position of being either chronically in pain or in a variety of forms of, of, of medical ailments, um, there is a demonstrated efficacy in the medical cannabis program to improve the quality of one's life significantly. And also, ongoing research where and whenever possible, despite our federal government's best efforts, into the healing effects that are accrued as a result of the medical cannabis program. So folks, October 28th and 29th, NECAN slash RI. It's, it's a wonderful day. Uh, if you've got someone in your family who's a member of the program in particular, if they're suffering, uh, there's a great sense of community at this event as well. So it's not just a trade show, it's not just a bunch of quick sale artists. You'll see members of the entire community statewide here. So again, NECAN slash RI. Folks, you are in fact listening to the Coalition on the Worldwide Coalition Media Network broadcasting live here at the Go Local Live Broadcasting Center, 90 Way Bossy Street, in the heart of the city we love, Providence, Rhode Island, the naked city, the city of 1,000 stories. Uh, we're telling a couple of them tonight. Um, Randy Milk is in studio. We, we have a friend, another uh, a member of the tri uh, Tribal Nation, is going to join us in a few minutes uh, and get his, uh, his re reflections on some of these issues. Um, let's talk about the economics, if you will, the business development, the opportunities. Where, where are the tribe is? They've, they've been denied, um, you know, uh, the entrepreneurial ability to engage in casino gaming that's, you know, essentially self-directed. What is the economic status of the, of the tribal nation now? Uh, how are folks doing? Um, well, economically, we don't, and I'll, I'll, I'll qualify it, I suppose. You know, a lot of these opportunities, I, I never, well, personally anyways, never like to... Um, you know, a lot of the tribal laundry, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, for the tribal members listening and watching, uh, then, you know, hopefully what I'm sharing and, and will share, that, uh, you know, you're, you're involved, you're aware of things, and you want to get more involved. Because as, as we're talking about some of these external forces and powers and, and uh, problems that the tribe has realized uh, have failed us one way or another, um, we're not a people that just looks for government handouts or whatever the case may mm -hmm. be, you know, that, that some people may think, and, you know, no. We take advantage of opportunities that the federal government allows um, as much as possible. Sometimes your hands are tied or whatever opportunities that the states may curtail. But, you know, there's programs out there that the federal government provides to uh, tribes based on you know, historically the atrocities that were perpetrated, uh, different things. but. You know, at the same time, you know, on the reservation, you know, government structure and administrative structure and, and uh, how people one way or another come on the reservation uh, looking into programs and assistance and all. We're not unlike any other government looking out for its people. State of Rhode Island, the state government, state house over there, um, we have the same uh, roles, responsibilities, and desires for our people as Rhode Island, as Boroughville, as Providence does for its people and how you try to look out for your residents, if mm -hmm. you will. Um, right now, and, and down through the years, the tribe has considered various things. In the end, um, you know, it's a decision that should be the tribe's. You know, it shouldn't be the state or the federal government um, dictating how or what we can do. You know, if, if the law allows it, then don't hold us different than um, others, um, just because we're near again, so we're on our reservation and all. Um, you know, we, again, we're to, to the greatest extent, a sovereign nation within Rhode Island in this case. And um, a nation that should be able to look out for its own under the rules and regulations. It's not like we're lawless or, or clueless or um, without rules down there. Um, and, you know, and it's not like we're just some uh, uh, dime store, cigar shop, Indian in the corner, whatever. No, we're people that have, speak our mind and will defend what we know to be ours or rights or whatever the case may be. And, you know, hopefully have the respect of uh, those that we have to work with or, or, or work it out the best we can or this court system sometimes like the smoke shop raid. Right now we don't have a lot going on down there but it um, doesn't mean we haven't tried or doesn't mean other things aren't on the burner um, or doesn't think other things aren't, aren't um, moving to whatever extent. Uh, I know this and I wanted to say that uh, more to the, the, the Narragansetts that might be listening. Um, as, as a tribal member we all have the right to have our voices heard um, be it outside the reservation or internal to the reservation and whatever leaders or so-called leaders might be in place at the time, mm -hmm. um, you know, be it in the past or in the future. 
every tribal member has a right to have 26, 700, whatever voices heard their, have their voices heard. And if decisions are supposed to be made by the tribe, then darn it, have the tribe make the decisions. No one leader or two leaders or whatever have the right to dictate or make a decision for the tribe as a whole. Um, much like the decisions made by various governments and all. And I'm, I'm talking, uh, you know, maybe in riddles here for some people. No, no, that's fine. Because they don't know everything that's going on on the rest. No, but there, I mean, there's been controversy in, in the last few months about tribal leadership. Now explain how, how is the tribe, you know, in terms of uh, the legalities, how, how is the tribe structured in terms of its leadership? Not so much the individual names, but on a, on a physical level. I mean, you have, you have a chief, but break down the other roles, if you will. Yeah, uh, our government structure, um, when it's uh, um, operating right and legally, according to our rules and regulations, our election rules and regulations and all, the chief sachem and the nine-person council form the ten-person government. Mm -hmm. The chief sachem position is not unlike, say, the president or the governor. Council is not unlike uh, Congress or um, General Assembly. Mm -hmm. um, you know, different roles and responsibilities to an extent, but to the greatest degree possible, hopefully um, coming together with decisions that they can move forward with, you know, mm -hmm. as, as a, a body of ten. Um, you're not always going to agree. As when, we're not different in that way. Um, but that's the government structure. You know, administratively, there's an administration with various programs, you know, social services and, and um, natural resources, tribal police department, you know, normal administrative programs. Yeah, and let me jump in for a second. You've got, uh, because ultimately there's the Bureau of Indian Affairs. Right. And uh, again, naivete, typical Rhode Islander, I live in a suburb called Cumberland, most famous for being named after a mid-market convenience store chain. That's, that's, that's how interesting we are. So I'm not... Is really? Yeah, I, well, I, 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 I believe it is, all right? <laughs> Where Papa Gino's is supposedly the best pizza in town. Anyhow, um, so a lot of us really aren't aware other than through popular movies and, and, and when events all of a sudden bubble up to the top. We're not really aware of the structure. So you have your own police department. You have your own judiciary. Uh, the structure's there. Right. Is someone legally in the position? No. Okay. So inter interesting. The, is the Bureau of Indian Affairs on site in the reservation? Is, are there folks representing the federal government there, or is it someone that you report to from afar? Well, the BIA um, is the overseer on the part of the federal government, Department right. of Interior. Um, the overseer of uh, uh, the federal government and the tribal nations to the greatest extent. There's other um, entities, EPA and, and Justice and whatever the case may be, but you know, by and large, BIA, Bureau of Indian Affairs, has the, the most direct and ongoing relationship with the tribal nations. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> grants perhaps channeled through the BIA. Um, BIA is, is divided out into different regions. Our regional office is uh, down in Nashville, Tennessee called the Eastern Region Office. Okay. Um, and then again, all the regional offices uh, report up to um, Interior, mm -hmm. sec the Assistant Secretary of Indian Affairs. So yeah, the, the federal government has um, an ongoing relationship in, in, you know, through their agencies and departments and all. Um, but by and large, it's the BIA that has its, uh, the, the biggest relationship with the tribes. So in the fullest sense, when you enter what is recognized, at least by the federal government, as the Narragansett Indian Reservation, it is in fact a sovereign nation with your own laws, your own, allegedly your own law enforcement, and all the protection and rights accorded to, well, allegedly. Well, well, I don't know the, the, the um, uses of allegedly. As far as we're concerned, yeah, it will be argued by outside forces, state, whatever. Do the state laws apply? Um, you know, the, the Settlement Act in 1978 and uh, acknowledgement in 83, um, for my tribe that is, right. um, the state will, will all be at loggerheads as to um, you know, if state law applies or not. It's, there's been legal battles and it will be more in the future. Um, well, and in fact, it's that 1983, correct me if I'm wrong, it's that 1983 recognition date that has created so much trouble for you in a sense in adding land to the reservation because it's, what is it, it's post-1936 or, or something through that. 34. 34, okay. Right. Um, that, that has created, again, that's what I mean, the legacy of Rhode Island's interference into your sovereign nation's government has created this, 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 this ongoing challenge as to your ability to take advantage uh, and to prosper under 
whatever opportunities are afforded to you by the BIA and by the laws of Friday. It, just, it, it strikes me that, you know, this, this, this legacy just continues on and on and on where the, you, you run afoul of some obscure technicality, yet it has these, this inordinate impact on the day-to-day -day life of the tribe. And technicalities, nuances, uh, mm -hmm. tweakings of the law, um, not little letters of the law um, right. being used to one's benefit, um, or holding down, maybe in this case, my tribe. But, you know, it's not just Rhode Island, it's not just the Narragansett, it's, it's, you know, it's uh, all inclusive out there. You know, right. A lot of tribes, as, as well as they may be doing economically, there's still battles in whatever the case may be with state. And even as well as they're doing, and, only for a focal point, the casinos that a lot of tribes, Mohegan Sun and, and uh, Foxwoods and, and other tribes around the country, um, that uh, economic development opportunity has done tremendous benefit to the tribes and employment and health benefits and whatever the case may be, much like, again, uh, uh, governments try for their people. But it's, it's not just that, and, and we can't take it for granted because the law can change tomorrow, and suddenly the law that allowed for this opportunity for tribes short of the Narragansett, um, could change in a heartbeat. The makeup of the uh, United States Supreme Court and, and some of them justices. I remember uh, when, when we went down there, the uh, uh, Kachiri Act, the Kachiri um, um, issue, mm -hmm. the land in the trust that you speak of, that right. the viewers may know about, we tried to add additional lands for a housing site, a right. low-income HUD, HUD sponsored um, HUD, uh, housing and urban development, uh, federal program sponsored housing site. We had uh, 12 units built on our reservation for our elders to move into. And the state of Rhode Island the town of Charlestown stepped up and said, no, nope, wait a minute, you're not getting that land in the trust. we got to argue this out and see if uh, um, you can take additional land in the trust. Effectively, that was the focus of it. Uh, long story short, um, we lost in federal court. Um, and again, it was former Governor Kachiri that led the argument. But he happened to be the, the point at the time. You know, it, it's mm -hmm. been other governors, and it's been the same attitude. Democrat, Republican, you know, it's like, you know, let's, let's hold them back to whatever extent we can, keep them in, in change, if you will. Um, but uh, so now we can't add additional lands to a, especially a housing site. Our elders that, that died, my mother-in-law died, that would have been um, a resident at that housing site, um, but for the town of Charleston stopping it. And they wouldn't let us, it wasn't our reservation anyways, so town regulatory authority was over it anyway. You guys are not working that uh, project until we work out this issue in court. Twelve years later, whatever we lost in court, the project, the houses are dilapidated and, and, and inhabitable and they still sit there today on foundations. Mm -hmm. you know, people can go down to the uh, across the street from part of the reservation in Charleston off of King's Factory Road. Look at that housing site. And look, it's, it's despicable what these people will go to to try and hold back or hold in check, um, in this case, my people. Um, real quick, I don't know where we are for time, but I wanted to go back to, to my uh, the mm -hmm. viewers that might be near against it. And, and it's the point of it. No, no, uh, uh, I'm repeating myself. Not one, not, no one person or people, uh, group of people, a handful of people can make decisions that the tribe has to make agreements, whatever the case may be, it has to be a tribal decision. And so don't let anyone have you believe or, or, or come to with the understanding, again, this is my people, they're there against it, that any one person or a handful of people can make decisions that bind our nation or our people in any way that isn't allowed under tribal law. Mm -hmm. So now we've got the situation with this water. Uh, that, that's what I was sort of hinting at, yeah. without saying that. All right, so... I, you know, I'm old enough, you know, one of my leading philosophers in life, I've got a few, um, um, Ricky Ricardo, um, <laughs> as, as Ricky would say to Lucy, splain Lucy splain. So I've got, I'm faced with, I call it local government's gone mad. Um, you know, you can tell from the show that the medical cannabis program is near and dear to our heart here on the show. Um, we believe in, in self-determination and little or no federal government interference in people's lives. Um, I think your history would probably support a lot of that. Um, so in the case of the medical cannabis program, briefly, a, a handful of town councils around the state just decided, yeah, we're, yeah, that's a ticket. We're going to pass our own law. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's pass a law against that. Well, it was, they lost in court. 
no surprise. Now you've also got the prospect now. You've got the folks in Burrowville who are fighting, the, fighting this power plant. Um, we're, I'm a strong supporter of a community's rights to self-determination. Uh, I'm also a believer in property rights, but as a libertarian, we have something that would be interesting to talk about offline sometime. We have something called the non-aggression principle, where we as libertarians essentially take an oath to not, agree, not engage in acts that um, aggressively or coercively take from others. It's kind of a unique concept in politics. Uh, so, you know, I have mixed feelings in one sense because of the private property rights, but I look at the situation of Burrowville and I look at the community and the outright harm it will do to the community and their way of life, and it's offensive to me that a government process has been set up really to sidestep their concerns and works again, if this sounds at all familiar, let me know, um, works again seemingly in, in complete ignorance or a determined avoidance of any discussion whatsoever of the community's concerns, and they're going to drop this bomb of a power plant. And you've got communities now who are claiming to be able to sell water. That I, so how did you guys get involved in this? <laughs> well, I'll, I'll, I'll be 100% honest. I first came to be aware of this alleged agreement between whoever with the tribe, yeah. not with the tribe, individual or individuals with the tribe, in an article in the Providence Journal. And that, that's why I was reflecting to you know, the, those more pointed comments to well, who's, what, who's, members. What are they selling? <laughs> oh, well, no, part of our reservation, um, you know, good for us. At the time, real quick, at the time we had the, the Settlement Act, uh, uh, Land Claim Settlement Act, um, how our reservation became established, 1,900 acres thereabouts, um, they had money, federal government provided the money to buy um, acreage, private landowners. Um, the state of Rhode Island also put up whatever money, provided 900 acre swamp. You know, and I'm sure at the time the state of Rhode Island thought, <laughs> yeah, we'll get over on the Indians here. You know, <laughs> let them take a 900 acre swamp. Little did they know, and now you know, fast forward to today, it's in, it's one of the largest uh, underground aquifers in the state of Rhode Island. Really? Yes, 900 acre swamp recharge area for the aquifer, and um, and the water that uh, um, flows. In the ground there, I don't know. That's that's the water people that can answer those questions. But um, somehow this this agreement, which tribal members don't know about, and that's what I was speaking to you about, tribal members that are listening, find out about it. Don't let anyone mislead you. Um, this this agreement that we will back up again. I'm going by the story. We're the backup, the second in line to provide water. If in I believe it's the town of Johnson doesn't. Um, isn't able to provide it for right. whatever rules, regulations, or perhaps. And from what I've heard, I've met with some um, folks in Belleville and, and uh, that oppose the project, the plan. Um, it's, it's uh, I don't know how the government, it's eminent domain and these other things that government can do on occasion, mm -hmm. or in this case, maybe force a power plant onto a town that doesn't want it, as well as all the other surrounding towns. From what I've come to learn, I've, I've only been a couple days involved in, in uh, finding out more and all, but. Um, if, if Johnson doesn't provide the water, then we're next in line, but this power plant and fracking and whatever the case may be, and, and natural resources, the gas and, and water and all, and, and the drain that it would have, the water it needs to run, right. never mind the environmental concerns and the pollution right, exactly. and all that's going to happen, and who would support something like this? If uh, great, great if it provides jobs, it, but any construction is going to provide jobs. From what I understand, a little bit I know about this project, it's going to be a great detriment to the environment, exactly. a great detriment to the town of Rowerville uh, in this case, surrounding areas, the uh, um, acid rain and, and everything that can... I'm no scientist and when it comes to these things, I'm not far from an expert, but you know, common sense would bring questions to your mind. Who wants this in their backyard? Who? Who wants... But yet, here it is. Bowerville might be, I guess the decision is going to come in Dece December, January, whatever, by a three-person utilities commission right, or whatever. Right, that's what they call a siding board, yeah. Yeah, um, and those three may, may hold the fate of Bowerville and however many residents are there, right. and all in northern Rhode Island for that matter, and, and wherever the wind may blow, the polluted air. You know, I, I know the, uh, the country and we need uh, power and, and different ways of being right. looked into. But I'm also with the understanding, not to lose focus on uh, the detrimental part of it, is Rhode Islanders, Rhode Islanders tend to uh, may uh, gain 
a dollar or two off their electric bills by the time this is up and running fully, it's not right. going to save big money for Rhode Islanders. Right. So what is the good part of this? But you know, for the sake of the water in Rhode Island and, and the Narragansett part of it, uh, the Narragansett tribe will say yes or no to this water being provided. Mm -hmm. Not any couple individuals, not President Trump, not the governor, not anyone. The Narragansett tribe is going to say yes or no to this agreement in the end. And however it may have been signed so far, until the tribe sits and resolves this or talks it out, and if the tribe says yes, then fine. But it's a tribal decision. It's not mine as a leader or, or anyone else as a leader or right. alleged leader or whatever. But so, so, so this is really, this caught you by surprise. And, you, oh, yeah. and, and to say that you're intimately involved in the community affairs day to day is by no means an understatement. I mean, I understand. I mean, you're, you're clearly, I mean, what, what what are folks from what you've been able to gather and there's been so little information you're right what 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 are folks initial reaction to this notion uh, I, I it, it it strikes me that while you may have a have have discovered a very valuable natural resource um, selling it to a power plant can't be very attractive and and, and the and what I've learned um, you know the big trucks you know several a day or whatever the case may be um, what the, the, the water need of what this plant needs when, when it's fully operational, um, millions of gallons a year, whatever, I, I, I don't have the exact numbers, but nonetheless. And uh, my understanding, this company, this is the largest one it's going to build in this country, but it has the power plants dotted around this nation. Um, their drain, 25-year uh, agreements is the norm, and at the end of 25 years, maybe when the power plant served its purpose, too bad for your water if you still have any. You know, a, a recharge area, it's not necessarily going to keep recharging if you, the rain stops or slows down right. or whatever. You know, what good's a recharge area if it has no water to recharge with? Right. Um, but uh, what, what, what happens here on, I know there's a meeting for the sake of the project, there's a meeting next week up in Barville I plan on attending. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as a tribal member, I, I look forward to being able to make a, a, a conscientious decision based on all the information that the tribe will make as far as this or anything in the future, elections, uh, um, who's sitting as a uh, government officials, who's sitting or not sitting as a judge, um, you know, governmental structure and administrative structure and all, um, that's a decision by the, of the tribe, not unlike any other um, um, town or state or whatever the case may be. The residents or the citizens of that town or state or this nation uh, elect, their, uh, elect their officials or by their rules of whatever governs the, the rules that govern have to be followed. No one's above the law, no one's above the rules, even those that think that they make the rules and laws. So by no means is this a, a, a finished deal on any stretch. They, you know, there are people out there who would try, whenever you have a, a, a large company like Invenergy, they'll, they'll try to um, convince people by words, by messaging, by advertising about the inevitability of something, while at the same time, not really having any legitimate claim to the authority to do this. So, so if, I don't want not I don't want to put words in your mouth, but at this point in time, no real decision has been made by the tribe. Uh, absolutely, no, no tribal decision. Whoever signed that agreement, and those that are listening within the tribe, they know they know who signed it, who, who thinks they have the right to sign it, whatever the case may be. I'm not. It, it's just the structure of things. Mm -hmm. The tribe will make decision one way or another at some point. However, there is this concern, this, uh, um, this company may think that um, what they have is legitimate, um, perhaps in Rhode Island law, whatever the case may be, um, but if someone's not authorized, entitled to sign a document, mm -hmm. then that invalidates it or, or brings question of legalities to it, but, but nonetheless, um, may they think they do have a right? And, and I've, I've, I'd love to see this agreement just to see what it does, what, how it obligates our resources how it financially benefits people to whatever extent, because I'm sure if you're selling water, then there's money coming in. Where's the money going? How right. much money? Well, who's benefited um, maybe already? Who's going to benefit in the future? How is the tribal members going to benefit? Mm -hmm. um, was there a finder's fee that's already been? I don't know nothing about it. And 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 um, it's not that it's uh, because it's a near against it, right? This agreement could be with Johnson. I don't know anything about a Johnson agreement. but. As a town resident of Johnson, if I was, I'd want to know about it, and I probably have already seen a copy of it. Right, right. So, the jury is very much still out on this. There is, um, 
um, this is going to be something that, that you folks are obviously going to take very seriously and you're because of the, the amount of money but also the 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 use and the uh, suitability of the use of, of some very dear natural resources are are at stake um, so you're there's a deliberation process that has yet to take place. And, and, and the tribe will have that opportunity one way or another, at, at whatever point, tomorrow or next month, whenever mm -hmm. um, the, the time uh, avails itself. Um, but real quick, and my, my tribe, uh, some of the viewers maybe, perhaps you saw, uh, DAPL, the Dakota Pipeline um, out in uh, North Dakota and all. You know, we had there was a great undertaking by a national uprising right. um, out on the reservation. Right. You know, people from all over focusing on going out there and supporting the tribe and trying to stop this pipeline. And Obama's administration, you know, they, they recognized it and held off and whatever. And as soon as Trump comes in the next day or whatever, shortly thereafter, get the pipeline going again. But in defense of the environmental concerns, in defense of that nation, the Lakota, Na Lakota nation, um, people from all over. Uh, whites, blacks, natives, you name it, they were out there and staying with those people for months on end. Um, but it, it felt so good that that uprising, that, that show of, of unity, if you will, that people were galvanized behind that. And yet, there's something about this, is, again, a little bit I know about this power plant, but something's wrong. If we can try and stop a pipeline and the potential harm that that does, but yet, Provide water to something that may be as just as much a detriment to the uh, environment or uh, um, Mother Earth or whatever the case may be. You know, things got to be looked into deeply. Is this the only way? And, and there's a power plant just down the road, from what I've seen. Right. You know, it's like the, the, these folks. Uh, we have a saying on this show: We are Boroughville. Um, we 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 support their right to oppose this and their right to demand true due process yeah. in arriving at whatever decision occurs and we support them as a community to have a level of self-determination in place so that their lives are not disrupted for a, for a short-term uh, economic gain at the expense. I'm a, I'm a capitalist, I believe in economic gain, but when it happens, in my personal opinion, uh, at the expense of others, I, I, I can't suffer that. I just absolutely can't. You, we're, we're almost out of time. You've got a buddy out front. Just want, want to bring your buddy up for... Is he Did him? he come in? I don't, I don't, I've been watching. I don't oh, know. okay. Um, can I look? Or? Where, where, can, where can folks find out about more about the tribe? What, what's it, it's tough because the media has paid so... Unless there's outright controversy, the media pays so little attention, unfortunately, to the tribe. Is, is there a single source? Is it, is it a website or is it the Facebook page? I know we highlight the Facebook page in our pre-show promotion, but is that the best way to sort of keep a keep a abreast of what's going well, on? Well, I know we, we have a website, near against Indian Tribe org, I believe it is. Right. How updated that is, I'm not sure. Um, but as you're saying that, it did come to mind earlier um, that if I know we have 2,600 members thereabouts, and you know, not all adults, but for those adults, you may get different versions of, of what's going on with the tribe. Mm -hmm. If you were to ask 10 of us, uh, it'd be interesting to see what, what, what came. It's, well, it's politics, yeah. just like in any other community. Right, but, but if you really want to hear, talk to a neighbor against it. You know, the website, it is what it is, and I'm not sure if it's updated, and I don't believe it is. But have us come into the schools. Have us uh, interviews such as this. Um, you know, maybe not every tribal member would want to do an interview, but nonetheless, even if what I'm saying isn't 100% agreed to by other tribal members, at least something's coming out you know, to enlighten the viewer and as to something with the Narragansett tribe that they didn't know before. Again, we hold a lot of things close to vest, and we don't want everything known about us. But at the same time, if, if some kind of education, some kind of understanding, mm -hmm. some kind of perhaps a sympathy or an empathy that may be grown from that uh, um, insight, um, we're not... We're not looking for pity, but Don, we're looking for respect that, that's due us, and and at the same time that we give in like fashion. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Well, I certainly appreciate you coming in. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity. Well, and and uh, I mean it when I say the door is open. If you uh, if you have concerns, issues, you don't even got to call. Just <laughs> we're here from six to nine. Just show up. You, you might regret giving me that up. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. <laughs> yeah, we we. Uh, we have a, a hashtag for our show. It's hashtag take it personally. And, um, you know, I, I have a tremendous amount of respect for folks who dive into 
the community and and simply do things because they're the right things to do who don't aren't because there's somebody a lot smarter than i once said that public service is supposed to be for people who want to help lives not get one <clears throat> and um you know and and again i uh, three different people from three different walks of my life suggested that you were the person to speak to that you would bring the fairest most honest appraisal of of life in the narragansett nation i, I think you've done an admirable job of that and this is a conversation we want to keep having going on i do appreciate it Pat. I, I welcome this opportunity and, and if others uh, present themselves in the future i'll we'll, take advantage no we'll be in touch folks randy noka of course he is a member of the and intimately involved in the day-to-day -day affairs of the Narragansett Indian Nation, a seminal part both of the history of Rhode Island and of current Rhode Island, it's something that we need to remind ourselves. Um, we're going to follow closely this water issue. I fully embrace his willingness to dive into this, make sure that this is not a done deal, that uh, all the study and research necessary to make an informed decision will take place. Um, I appreciate his respect. Um, it's almost traditional in nature, his respect for the environment and he points out quite aptly the Indian nation sport over at Dapple for the folks of the Dakota tribe that took place just a few short months ago. We could be looking at a similar event here. 